Thanks again, Bill. Today I want to introduce you to my palette. And uh, first of all, we have a number six fan blender here that I'd like you to see. We'll be using that. We got a uh, number two red sable liner brush right here. I'll be doing most of the flowers with this one here. This is a number 16 synthetic sable. And of course, Bill Alexander's two and a half inch blending brush. Let me introduce you to my palette here. Titanium white, cad yellow, permanent red, alizarin crimson. I've got primarily sap green with a little touch of phthalo green in it, phthalo blue, and Van Dyke brown. My intentions are today is to do blue poppies and uh, some white daisies, possibly with a hint of the blue in the, in the daisies. I've made a preliminary sketch here with charcoal, and I'm going to go right over top it with the magic white. So let's fire her in. What I intend on doing here is putting this magic white on to a certain thickness that when I go over this flower, I can still see the sketch. You notice that? That's for all you people that need to make sketches to begin with. And it also kind of gives you a guide for the thickness of your magic white. I may put it just a little thicker on the background. Now you notice I'm hitting the background first, then going over the flowers when, the, when there isn't quite as much on. A little bit more. See, now I can pull that across over the flowers. and leaving it so you can see your sketch. Up and down. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go right into the phthalo blue. We'll make a kind of a pale blue background. Go into the lizard crimson, a little touch of that to gray it. Maybe a little more blue. And let's just fire it right in there. We'll have a little lighter up on the top. As we go down, we'll gradually get it a little darker. Go right into some more blue, make it a little bit darker. A little touch of lizard, gray it. Kind of a soft whiskey background. Do the same thing on the other side. The flowers are going to be more pronounced. They're going to be a lot a darker blue, so they'll show up against this lighter background real nicely. Now let's get down into a little a little more blue, a little more alizarin. Kind of blending it as I go. Okay, down here on the bottom, We're going to go with one more color now. We're going to do the same two. To increase the darkness, we're going to go into Van Dyke Brown. Give it a little more of a gray blue color. Same way over here on this other one. On the other side.
down underneath the flowers here, let's, let's go with a little stronger gray color. A little touch more blue. More Van Dyke. That's good. We've got a nice soft blue there. We'll, we'll, we'll make dark leaves against it. Okay, it's nice and dry. Let's hypnotize that whole thing and smooth it out a little bit. Just this very soft whisking action back and forth. Maybe a 10 to lean towards a figure eight stroke there. Okay. Our next step is we'll put the, we'll put the base on for the flower. So let's go right into the uh, phthalo blue, direct. Put plenty, load that brush up real heavy. Probably enough to do one flower right there. Let's try it. Just go right into the blue. Isn't that a sh dynamic color? Look how nice that fan brush is for application. You can actually make it shape some of the outside flowers with it, the, le the petals of the flower, I mean. Kind of gives you a guide then to go by. Okay, that takes care of that one. Let's do the same thing on the other one. This is kind of the main flower right here, the prima donna. Maybe we'll hang one down here, just part of it showing. Same way there if you want to kind of give you an idea where the petals are. We'll make these three kind of dark. Okay, what I don't like right there now is I got something straight across. I'd like to point that out to you. So the best thing to do is to bring one of them down a little, little lower. So let's just do it this way. You got to make mistakes to find out what's right. Okay, as we go up now, we're going to tend to make them a little lighter. So let's, let's go right into some white with that blue. Add white to the blue, about like that. And do the next one up. Same way with this one back here. Same way on this one. And maybe a real small one up here. Okay. Our next step is we'll go into the leaves. We'll use this 16 synthetic sable I was telling you about earlier. And let's go right into this mixture sap green and phthalo green. We're going to keep it fairly dark to begin with. A little touch of yellow. Let's try that and give it a shot right here. And if we need to correct the color, we will do that. It's not bad. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little touch of Van Dyke Brown to that. We want these bottom stems kind of 
dark. I'd like you to notice something here. Notice this end, how it's, it's like that. Look like it's cut. Let me fill you in on how to do that. Just pull it down like that, and then as you as you get put a little pressure on there, and then pull it off. See, it looks like it's been cut. All right, let's uh, let's do a few leaves over here. I'm going to do a lot of big, broad leaves in here, and I'll kind of give you a step-by-step -step plan here as I go. <clears throat> what I've done done here is I've created the center vein of the leaf. It kind of gives you a guide to, to bring your strokes back to. Okay, start at the tip of the leaf, angle, angle up towards that line. Notice how I stayed right on that line. I want this leaf tipping over that way. So I'm going to put the dark back over on this side, a little darker. And if it didn't get quite as dark as you wanted, we'll just add a little touch of more of Van Dyke Brown come back in and do it again. It's no problem. Very good. Maybe one right here. This one we'll just tip up and leave on the end, edge. See it's automatically there. It's, it's the other side's on the other side and you can't see it. You notice how I'm bringing some of the blue into the flower, into the leaf here? That makes these leaves kind of harmonize. It reflects some of the flower, or the color of the flower onto the leaf. Okay, let's do a few more leaves. Even though it goes on top of the flower, that's there's nothing wrong with that because that that gives it a transparent look when you do the flower. Let's, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little bit of the phthalo blue into this green color. I need it a little bit more intense. So let's just add a little touch of this phthalo blue into that green mixture of Van Dyke Brown and, and Sap Green. That's better. Don't worry about crossing up over your stems and stuff. That kind of gives depth in the in your painting. Maybe something over here. We're strictly onto the broad leaves right now. If you want to show this one that you can see down in the leaf, you can either put the light, more light on this side or dark. So we're going to kind of have our light source kind of filtering down like this. So that probably would be most likely be in a, in a dark shadow area. So let's go with a little intense, intenser color by adding a little bit of phthalo blue to it. Now bring this edge in like this. Carry out the bottom. See how that looks like it's folded over? We might have went just a little further with this one to tip at the angle a little more. Let's have another one right up there. I kind of like to do them in groups of three. Because when you, when you get a, like a single leaf by itself, it looks kind of lost like it needs a home. See how simple that is? We'll be doing a few other type of leaves. I'll tend to do most of these at one time here, so by the time you get this far in the painting, you'll be able to 
have this part of it mastered. Maybe a couple right up in here. See how that magic quite works for you? It's it's behind there and it just flows so nicely. Makes the paint flow on. Tip one down right there. You notice as you're looking more straight onto a leaf, it always has it has a instead of a straight stroke like this, the strokes you curve them a little bit more. Like that. Notice that? Let's do a few more up in here. This is kind of a step by step procedure. While we're at it, let's just put a stem on that one. Maybe a few little strokes coming off of there, showing where it was in a bud one time. One more. We need a big one right in here or two. And then we'll go into our other type of leaves. Maybe one on end edge wise there where it has shows part of the dark underneath. Okay, let's do a let's do a different type of leaf now, using the same color and uh, the same brush. Okay, why don't let's start right up here. Let's make the fine line. You notice how I made that fine line? That's a, this is a kind of an important thing, is to use the bottom heel of the brush. In this case, it's a bottom. If I was doing it from the top, you'd, I'd say use the top heel. The bottom heel of the brush, and just let it, you're using just a corner. We're gonna do the single, a single stroke leaf. It's just one half of a, of a stroke. See how easy that is? Another good thing, a good point is, you notice all, uh, all these lines that I put out here? There's not a straight line in it. You don't, you don't make any straight lines. You, everything is flowing. It flows up out of the arrangement. And that's real important to make a saleable painting. Okay, now I'd like you to notice what I did there. I took, uh, I made that single stroke and then I put one on the other side. So that's the other stroke I was wanting to tell you about. So I call that just the double stroke leaf. Just for s simple terminology so you don't get mixed up. Single stroke leaf and a double stroke leaf, and these are the broad leaves. And they make kind of nice. They make a nice filler. Make the thin line, and get your speed built up. Speed is real important in florals. Otherwise, they look real stiff. So really try to get your speed. That's a key to success in the art world. Maybe a few over in here. By using this same principle, you can you can make a fern too. In other words, you can do like this, but just put these strokes closer together, and you could have a fern. What I kind of look for is I look for balance to see where something needs to go to balance the painting out. And uh, at this time, it's fairly balanced. Maybe a little little weak right in here. I could go back into the dark again. 
into your Van Dyke brown. And a little touch of your blue. Again, make it a little darker. And of course that sap green and a little touch of phthalo green that was in it. There's a case where you're looking kind of on, straight on to leaf. You know, it's how the curves I was telling you about. That's important. That's, a, that's perspective in leaves. Maybe one right there. Okay, let me clean this brush. We'll use it to make the, the poppies. Get all that green out of there. See with that screen in there, you're not you're not stirring up them pigments that was down in the bottom. Still a little bit more green in there. That phthalo green is the chroma value of a phthalo green is real strong, so. Okay, let's, let's go right into our white. Let's pull a little white off of here over into here. Fill a brush up with white. Go right over into the phthalo blue. And get you a nice, pretty blue. Now let's check this hair against that. That's, that's gonna be perfect. Okay, let's let's go right up into this main flower here. I want to get you familiar with this first stroke, the most important stroke in doing poppies. Okay, it's a lot of pressure. You initially put a lot of pressure on. I'll do it real slow so you can follow me. Start pulling and twist a little bit, twist the brush a little bit and then pull it down and release it. It's a it's a push twist and release type stroke. Let me do, I'll, now I'll follow through with it. Now the, the next stroke is an overlapping stroke. You bring it down, just overlap the stroke. That's all you gotta worry about. Okay, we'll go back over on this side and do the same thing. It's just in reverse. Push it and release it. I like to, I generally load the second time because that first stroke that you put in there, you, you get most of the paint off your brush. That's a strong blue, so you gotta, you gotta play with it a little bit. You might wanna come back and hit that one a little bit more. And then the next, the next petal on the flower is, overlaps this one, same stroke, but it's, a little more straighter because of the perspective, you're looking at it more. <clears throat> and bring that right over to the center of that. Do the same thing here. I'm gonna go over top of that one again. Okay, our next petal will come, it'll be right through here. Start about like that, push up. You notice how I'm getting them nice soft edges up there? You're pushing the paint off of the brush as you go up and, and as you release it. Real desirable effect. Gives it that roughly edge. Put some side petals on here. Always releasing the pressure as you go back. It creates the depth in the flower. Maybe over here too, right here. Just put one right there. And also I'd like to point out at this time, you notice all the strokes, all the strokes, all the way around, they're all heading down here to the point where they're attached to the stem. Very important in, in making florals. It doesn't matter what flower you're doing. All them petals got to work out so they go down hook on that stem. When you get that mastered, you got it 
you pretty well got the flower handle if you can figure the color out. We'll come back later and do some highlights. Let's go on over to this flower over here. Same color. This one here will start up way out there. Do that comma stroke, overlap. Reload again. Went over top of it again. We're going to catch a little more light this time, so these will be a little lighter right here. Add a little more white. Just using blue and white right now. Okay, let's come over and do an opposite one right over here. Keep in mind them strokes go all go down to that center. Very important. Come back over and do this other side. Okay, now maybe we want to overlap another petal right here. So we'll just go right on top of that one. Like that. This one here was a little problem right there, so let's just bring this one out like that. More white and blue. The green that looks good in there, it shows you it has a transparent look. Put a little more highlight on that one. Okay, let's go over and do this one right here. Same colors. This one here will tip that way a little more. So let's let's go right in and do this front one first. It gives you an idea where what you got to do to them back ones. All overlapping strokes. It's very important. Put this one down in here like that. Still into the blue and white. Let's put this one up here like this. And then bring these petals back down. Now they'll be a little shorter, see, because it's tipped over more. Very important, perspective wise. Like that. Come in here and do these. Let one fold out of there. We got a couple down in here we need to fill in. If you want that leaf to show through there, hit it lightly. See how it bleeds through? We lost it a little bit right here, so let's just go back and do that one right over there again. Okay. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to clean this brush and get a little cleaner white because we our values are a lot lighter up there. I want less blue on the brush. So I'm going to use more white now. I want you to know that more white. and a lot less blue. Matter of fact is we may use just about straight white and once of course once we get into here into the flower it picks up the blue and then it automatically tones it down. So these flowers are going to be more on edge. So let's let's just wheel this and right up there like that. More white Come back in up here and give that comma stroke again. A little bit showing back there. Put another pedal like that in there. Try to keep that edge out there working for you. It, 
that really saves you it saves you from highlighting up there and it's done with one stroke very important maybe this one here comes in from the behind like that this one here you don't see much of it so just bring them a lot shorter the ones in the back are not nearly as long you you got to learn that perspective in flowers there's there's quite a lot involved there more than it meets the eye same way up here let's use more white lean it more towards the white I generally make these on top more closed because it's higher in the arrangement and it's it follows the rules of perspective more of the same okay let's wheel up here and do this one this one here we'll just barely see the back side of it just indicate the top of the pedal back there if you want to come out on the out of here into the background that's fine you can do that too just bring it right out okay what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to highlight some of these flowers now we got to get we got to get this rid of this blue again off of the brush okay this step requires a softer white go right into your magic white load it up load your brush up real heavy bring it up here into your the last the lightest color blue that you pre, that you mixed on their last flowers we got it nice and soft now let's put some highlights on this start at the edge let that bleed off of the end again come over here and do that the same way you just you just duplicate them comma strokes that you did right off and everything else that you did you just do the same thing over back over and do that sign this is kind of the main flower so you want a little more attention on it a little over there it's kind of weak right here let's put a petal right there off of this other same off of this flower Maybe some of the highlights on this one show over in there. You'd see some of the highlights on this one for sure. Maybe a little bit on this tip right here. Keeping it fairly simple. Maybe just on this one petal right here. Maybe up here on this one. Okay, we'll put some centers in them, in them poppies now. Clean the brush, use the same brush. We'll go right into this sap green mixture little touch of yellow okay what you do is make a half moon in this case you only see you're only seeing a, one portion of the center if you're looking at straight on we go for the complete circle but you're only seeing portion one half or less of it see I just made a half moon the same way in this one 
This one here is tipped up so far you wouldn't see it, and so are the rest of them. Okay. Let's go to this number two liner brush again. The sable liner. And we'll put the centers in. Make sure it's clean. Let's go right into let's go right into the yellow. We need a little bit of magic white. Let me get that on there. Right into the yellow. And this green that we mixed up, make it a little greener. Okay, let me show you how to do these centers now. I'll try to do it slow here for you so you can get the idea on the first one. You start right in and you push at the end. Do you see that? And once you get that down, you can do it fast. See? It's important to do it fast. Otherwise, you'd get that blob like I did right there to begin with. It's no biggie, but we can straighten that out. Same way in this one. And you will see a few over in this one over here, just a few. Even though you don't see the center, you're still going to see a few of them. Okay, clean that brush again. Use the same brush. Go right into your magic white. Into the magic white, up to the yellow. This we need a real loose mixture to make it stick to the thicker paint. Get it real heavy on the brush. Okay, and just stick it in there like that. Get a little more again. Try not to do a, try not to make a pattern there. Get it kind of break up the, up the, uh, so you don't have a lot of repeat stuff. Don't try hitting them on the end of each little stem you got up, otherwise they look real stiff. Same way over here. Okay. Let's do some daisies. Clean the brush. We'll mix up a little uh, orange for the center of the daisy. Let's go right into the yellow. Spring it right over here. Touch your red. Makes up a nice orange. What we're going to do now, we'll put a little spray of daisies out of here. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to indicate the center of this daisy right off. That gives you a guide. In other words, just make a deal like that. Come back in, make another one like that. Get a little more of that orange color, red and yellow. You see it went on top of that blue and it turned green, didn't it? That means you need a little more red in it. Red is the killer of green. We'll put one there, one there. Maybe we'll have a, one looking right at us there. There was a, when I was telling you about making the centers, <clears throat> for instance, see these would be on edge, this one would be looking right at, so consequently you've got a pretty much of a circle. Let's do them three and then see how we, if we need to add any else, any other places to get daisies. Clean the brush again. We're going to go right into the, right into white this time, into pure white. We'll use the background that's already on there for the daisy. So let's just go right into the pure white. Daisies are kind of fun, and everybody should know how to paint a daisy. What we'll do is we'll start on the back side, push it in, and release. Reload, load the same way. 
The brush is fairly full. Push it in and release. Same way. Push it in and release. Let's put a little bit of magic white with that. It's a real important tool to, to thin your paint down with. We need it to stick to the other paint. You notice what I'm doing here is, I, when I went in there, I polluted my brush. I'm pulling it out the side to get so I can get rid of some of that blue. This one here is tipping kind of over. There's a petal that's sticking way up in the air, and it comes around. Kind of overlap them, so they, you see it's kind of a push-release stroke. All right, let's do this one back over in here. Don't worry about where that other one was, you can go right over top of it. Now, if there's a case where you can just keep it going. If you want, if you want it further into the background, just keep it going with your stroke. And what we'll do, maybe I'll refresh in a few of the front ones up, where a little more of the light's hitting, and then go on around with it. Okay, let's do this main one right here. Then we'll we'll come back and refresh in the centers. That was just a guide that when we put them on there. This is the main one. Start a little long further out. It's a little bigger one. Push and release. Always having your brush loaded well. It's important. There's another point right there. Is, you see what I'm doing here is everything is going towards the center. If I made this pedal go over like that, it just wouldn't look right. There's no question about it. Go right on top of that green, don't worry about it. That tends to bleed that color through for you. Keep it going. This daisy's gonna steal a show, looks like. These poppies are gonna to have to step in the background. Okay. Let's clean that brush and let's refresh in the centers again. With yellow and red again. Do you get that? Yellow and a bit of red. You see this orange, this orange looks nice because it's a complement of blue. It's directly across the color wheel. Let's refresh in this one. See that blue give us a hard time again. We'll fool it. We'll give a little more red to it. I can do this one a little bit. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take our Twiggy brush again, the Alexander number two synthetic. We're going to give this a little depth around, around the edge of the center. And we're going to go, we'll go right into the Van Dyke Brown. Get it on there good. 
and a little touch of red. Van Dyke Brown, little touch of red. Now what let's do, let's go right up in here and give it a little darker on the base of that center. See how that does? Go up there and get a little more of the same. And down under here, same way. This one here, we do it just on the bottom also. Clean the brush. And you can take, take your little twiggy and, saw, and kind of blend that in on the edge. Soften the edge on the upper side. Okay, we'll go one step further here. Let's, let's go with the magic white and a little of the yellow. Make it light. Let me get you seeing what I'm doing here. I got magic white and little yellow. Let's put a few little dots on this, on this daisy. You see a lot of daisies with them little dots on like that. Maybe a few up here to suggest them up here also. Let me reload that again, get a little more on there. Maybe a few over here. Okay. Let me uh, do a few grass in here. I'll, with the same brush, I'll get into a pale green with yellow, and there's probably a little touch of the blue in there. Thin it down a little bit with the thinner. Let's do a little grass over top of things here. It always makes it nice, it makes a nice filler. Don't worry about going over that flower. It's, it's going to work out for you. And it always goes with the flow, too. Everything just flows out. Let's go back to our leaf brush again, and I'm going to put a few cover leaves on it, and we'll be through. This time, let's uh, go with a little lighter yellow. Let's go with that yellow that we had for the... for that grass. Now, we can use some of this grass for a stem if you want. If you want, to, for instance, you want to use that one for a stem, just go right in there. A couple of two-stroke leaves. Okay. i like you to notice what I'm doing now. As I go further down into the arrangement, I won't reload, losing more of the detail and color. Kind of keeps your eye back up into the main part of the flower. Let's do one right here. I'll make the line with it this time. It's kind of a rich green. That phthalo blue and the cadmium yellow makes a nice green. Now I'll do the same way here. I'll just bring this color on down. One more, sh one more like that, and we'll have it. Put one right over there. Okay. Okay. I think we've finished that now. I hope you all enjoyed this, and 
until next time, happy painting.